Welcome to another edition of Great Health, About and Happiness, and Outrageous Love. Mm. Hopefully this is our final um, COVID-19 update. We had a um, follow-up with the doctor today, a telehealth visit, I guess, a tele-appointment. Uh, they're using FaceTime. Uh, Telemed. Yeah. I think it's what yeah, they're called. Yeah, well, they, that's what they call it, yeah. Telemedicine. It's been, yeah, been around forever, but, you know, today... Everyone's trying to do this over some type of a device. Uh, they actually did FaceTime. I'm going to help them uh, fix that, you know, once the dust settles. But anyway, um, I had a cough, a pretty good cough over the weekend. Karen was worried about it. I was getting a little worried. Wanted to go double check and make sure we're, we're okay. It's that right. kind of dry cough, right? Well, and I was going to say, it wasn't so much that you had a cough, Except which you did, um, you know, but you also were having some tightness. In your chest yeah etc and the big concern for me was that the cough and the tightness in your chest was worse than it had been previously right, right, right. all of your other symptoms had right. subsided but that particular symptom got worse right. and um, I wanted to make sure that we were just on the right path yeah and you know this uh, virus, as you guys probably know, it, it, um, it can cause pneumonia, pneumonia-like symptoms. So mm -hmm. obviously, you, you know, as long as you get concerned about that. I was watching some uh, videos uh, the day before on lungs and, and pneumonia. It's pretty scary, so you start freaking yourself out. Mm -hmm. But good news is, uh, the doctor said that's kind of our traditional, uh, here it's very dry in Colorado, and um, you know, keep the humidifiers going. Uh, we've been taking some oxygen. He, he said to use the, uh, there's a, a water bottle that goes into the oxygen and put some moisture into it. Mm -hmm. The dry air can, can ex exacerbate that. So right. good, good news is we've got a clean bill of health moving forward and we hope this is our last update. Right. You, you want to kind of give a summary for Yeah, I'm going to give folks. a summary. And I also want to say not only do we live in Colorado, but we live up in the mountains and the altitude. So um, we're at the base of our mountain. We're almost at 10,000 feet. Right. So that can exasperate some of the symptoms, which was reassuring, you know, to, to be told that, um, you know, it's, it's getting, it, it seems worse because of our location, not because um, the COVID-19 is getting worse, because we do feel like, you know, we are yeah. at the tail end of it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, and I, I want to start with, you know, Jeffrey and I are probably two of the healthiest people I know. I had mentioned to um, somebody or I put it in Facebook that I'm already on the list for Children's Hospital to donate plasma as soon as I can test negative. And um, a friend of mine said he had dibs on my plasma because he knows how healthy I am. Uh, Jeffrey and I eat you know, whole food plant-based. I call it nutritarian because we really only eat foods that have nutritional value. Right. And I'm strict vegan. I mean, I don't even have honey. And I want to also let everyone know because a couple people have said, you know, what's with the fur blankets then? Um, these are obviously faux. My slippers, which I've had for like 20 years, are faux. I love soft, fuzzy stuff. I wouldn't think of um, having f real fur and anybody who knows me knows that. So this is all faux, cozy um, fur. So let's stick with the COVID virus. Moving right, right along. I just <laughs> Coronavirus. To, to clarify <laughs> that, but yes. So here's the summary for those of you who don't want to go through all of our videos. Um, however, if you're wondering about symptoms, etc go through the videos because those are detailed in a timeline. Well, the reason why we did that, we wanted to kind of, you know, squash the fears of yes. the fears of the unknown. I mean, the whole negativity and the fear um, is, is pretty bad in itself, kind of taking yeah. out people's immune system and their right. overall attitude. So we did the videos and we plowed through 10 days of, of the, the virus and updates because we wanted people to understand that, you know, it is survivable. Karen had a little tougher time, but at the end of the day, right. um, you know, obviously here we are feeling yeah. really good. So we're, uh, right. we're good. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm going to give you the timeline and again, you can watch the other videos and, you know, just to clarify what Jeffrey said, a couple of the videos I wasn't even in because I really had a very difficult time. This was not, um, like the flu. 
I haven't had the flu in a really long time. I mean, you and I really don't go to the doctor as much. But, you know, I, I'm sure I've had the flu in the past and it was maybe, you know, four days or a week or something. This was nothing like that. I just want to make that clear for me. It was awful. Um, but I'm here now, I've gotten through it, and, and that's the key is that we can all power through it. So there's no reason to be afraid if you do get sick. Um, so we, uh, we, we are pretty sure that we got the virus uh, March 14th. Um, we skied Vail on March 14th. And um, you know, Vail's a very international destination. In fact, while we were there, um, we were surprised how many people were speaking different languages. I yeah. would say it was close to 50% because the travel ban well, was already in effect. Yeah, that's, I was just going to say, that's the only reason why you were surprised. Because oh, yeah, normally exactly. when we go up to Vail, I mean, it's very international. That's the oh, way it is. But Yeah, normally right. you expect it to be at least 50% international. You're right. I think at that stage, yeah. and we were stopping people flying into the country. or, or it, was, it was tougher to fly into the country. Right. So, so people could have, probably were already well, here. Well, they obviously right. yeah. were already right. there. Yeah. Um, so, the, you know, a lot of people have said, where do you think you got it? That's where we think we got it because, again, it's very international and, and you know, we, I'm going to say stupidly or ignorantly, thought that being out in the fresh air skiing was a safe place to be. You know, we've since learned that it, it actually thrives in the cold weather. Um, it doesn't like the sun, and I'm not saying go to the sun go to the sun and hang out with people, stay inside regardless. But being outside skiing in the fresh air did not make us safe. So we're pretty sure it was March 14th skiing in Vail. Um, our symptoms came on abruptly on uh, March 17th. Yeah, so the Saturday later. skiing, that was a Tuesday, Tuesday night where we get the fever. Kind of classic time frame too, exactly. realistically. Exactly. And um, then we had a telemed doctor appointment on um, March 9th, uh, Wednesday. March 18th. Yeah, March 18th. And um, based on the symptoms that we had, they said that we both had, you know, COVID-19. Um, the symptoms got substantially worse. And what was concerning is we just couldn't get the fevers down at all. Your fever. My fever, right. specifically. We just couldn't get my fever down at all. So um, I went in and they tested and um, that was March 19th. And, well, and, and they, they uh, required you to come in. They said they, they right. wanted you to come in. We, right. you know, we really didn't want to go near the the hospital or the facility. Right. Um, for one, we didn't want to spread it, number one. Number two, if we didn't have it, you know, obviously, you know, it's it's, a, it's scary. We went through the orange cones and people have these like almost like hazmat suits on the whole nine yards, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, our goal was really to stay as far away from the hospital as possible. Um, but when I did go in, they first gave me a flu test, which came back negative. A lot of people have asked me, um, did I have a flu shot? The answer to that is no, I've never had a flu shot. And, um, you know, I did not have the flu this year. So, um, uh, or last year or the year before. Um, so I wanted to answer that question because a lot mm -hmm. of people have asked about that. And Jeffrey also did not have the flu shot. Right. Um, so then on March 30th, that was the day that our, um, the test came back, um, COVID-19 positive. So, um, you know, it was several days later, and by that time, I think we were feeling a lot better. Yeah. I was still having a fever, but it was much lower, um, and I was still having some oxygen issues. But again, I felt like overall, the pain level went from a, you know, excruciating to something that was very bearable by the time we got our you know, oh yeah, without without a doubt, we were kind of uh, almost back to normal. I know we had a few little things. Right. You, had, you had a few little things. Right. I, I felt like I was back to normal. Right. Other than the dry cough was still kind of lingering. Right. And what I just want to reiterate is, you know, there were a couple of times where, you know, one weekend where I thought, oh my gosh, you know, I woke up and I felt great and we did some videos. And um, I mean, I thought it was over it. And then I actually got worse. 
So I just want to let people know that so that if you do have a day where you're feeling better, that doesn't mean go out, do a job or, you know, be around anybody. In fact, really stay in and continue to rest because from what I've been told by the doctor, that's very common where you have, a, you know, a good day, even two good days, and then everything comes back. Yeah. So, um, that's, you know, kind of it in a nutshell. The doctor did tell Jeffrey that he can expect to have that cough for, what did he well, say? It could, could be as much as a month. So, right. you know, I, I had it a bit before and now quite a bit after. You know, and the, the interesting thing about this, nobody really knows how long this stuff lasts. We were just watching something on YouTube where a nurse mm -hmm. was cleared to go back to the hospital to go back to work. And she uh, demanded that she was tested again. And as she said, she was still shedding the virus. Um, she was still positive. And she right. was about ready to go back to work. I mean, that's right. what's scary about this. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, the people around her thought it was okay to go back. Right. But. And she did not want to spread the virus. And, and so she mandated that she wouldn't go back to work until they retested her. And when they retested her, she was still COVID-19 positive. So this can last... Um, I think they were saying up to 28 days where you're from the, you know, initial onset of positive to, um, you know, finally testing yeah. negative. Right. So that's quite a bit of time. And I think what they're saying is it could be different for everyone, but there is no norm with this. Right. You know, even with the symptoms, there's no norm with the symptoms. Jeffrey and I had very different symptoms and you hear about a lot of different symptoms as well. So, um, Anyway, we are um, really blessed that this is in our rear view mirror. Right. And we wanted to share this with everyone in the hopes that you can see, you know, we're, I'm going to say 99% back. Yeah. And, um, you know, feeling really healthy again and taking care of ourselves, doing everything we can to take care of ourselves, self quarantine. Um, yeah, we're still staying put this week. I just shot a note to my family just basically after looking at what's going on This is supposed to be a pretty tough week. I just said look nobody go to the grocery stores. Just stay home mm -hmm. And uh, you yeah, know everybody everybody can survive. We got we all have plenty of food in, right. in the cupboards in the freezer and the refrigerator, right? I mean right our doctor told us that this week and next week are expected to be the worst weeks so we wanted to share that information that he gave us with all of you so that you do everything that you can to stay inside and keep yourself, your family, your loved ones protected. And, um, you know, if there's, there's all sorts of great delivery systems out there um, for all of the grocery stores as well as the pharmacy. Sure. And if you are sick, you know, obviously talk to your doctors um you know if, if it doesn't feel like it's critical and i we are not doctors but the things that really helped us were um hydrating constantly yeah. and resting um which you know was really a blessing anytime i could fall asleep because i personally had a lot of physical in the pain beginning during it in the beginning so resting but even afterwards i mean i'm talking about day seven through day 11 you know continue to rest right. and um you know let your body heal our bodies are just amazing and, and they will heal even the fever when i had the fever i was so grateful for the fever because i knew my body was doing what it was supposed to do right. to fight off uh, the that's, virus that's what it does yeah and that's what it does yeah yeah. So I think that's it. Was there anything else in the appointment that he talked about? Yeah, no, um, for for us it may not be for everybody else. We have right. uh, humidify because we're at high altitude. Mm -hmm. It's very dry. So this dry cough that I have, a lot of it is from the dryness here at, at ten thousand feet here in Colorado. So we're running humidifiers, um, hook the water up to the oxygen, which adds some uh, uh, moisture into the oxygen, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. But outside of that, no, we're um, we're, we're you know cleared. Uh, we're just going to hang out here and hide out 
here at the condo for probably another week or so before we right. really go into public. I also wanted to add, um, and you know, I, I'm so grateful for our doctor. He spent quite a bit of time with us on the phone today. I mean, I want to say we were on for at least 45 minutes and he was really patient in answering all of our questions. Just on the phone, I want to just, it's, it's FaceTime. Oh, so sorry. It's video. Yeah. It's, it's a it's video like, call, yeah. exactly. Um, but uh, so I wanted to share this because he told us that right now there is no evidence yet to determine if COVID-19 can be gotten again by someone who's already experienced it. Yeah. So they think you're immune, but they don't, they can't, they, there's no confirmation. Right. Yet. What he said is based on past things like SARS, which was also a coronavirus, they're assuming that you can't get it again. But, you know, he's, he said that is, definitely not a known um, thing right now. So if you have tested positive and don't think it's safe, you know, to go be with somebody who hasn't, um, you know, tested positive because they don't know the answer then. Right, right, right. yep. And that's our update. That's it. Yeah, I'm wishing you great health, abundant happiness, and outrageous love from the Nesta Copper Mountain. Thanks guys, appreciate you listening.